Hi everyone, my name is Gabs, or the Fairy Librarian, and welcome to a new vlog. I'm back. Um, I'm back with vlogs. I'm also back in the country because I've been in Greece for the last week and a half. Um, so, yay. Um, it is Sunday morning. It is pretty early. Um... And I was probably going to wait to start this vlog tomorrow, um, but, well, actually I was going to do it yesterday, but something didn't happen yesterday, so I thought I'll do it tomorrow. Um, because today, I have a pretty filled day. I'm going to go walking with some friends, and it's going to be a pretty long one, so I'll probably take up the whole day, but, you know, fun times with friends, and, and the weather is going to be nice, so I think it'll be fun. Um, so I was going to do this tomorrow, but I'm up earlier than I thought it would be. So I thought, you know what, I can start the vlog today, and that's already happened. Um, then I don't, like, wait that for super long. Um, so, yeah, I thought let's start off the vlog with some very ambitious, unrealistic plans. Um, because I'm in the middle of one book and then I have three more books next to me that I definitely would like to get to this month. Like I don't need to finish them this month. Um but like I would like to start at least all three of them and get a semi decent chunk of the way through. Um and then on top of that I also have a comic that I would like to read at some point and then um, Big Pan and Tiny Dragon, which is also my TBR for the month that I didn't read yet. Um, but those will both take like under an hour. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but the stack I have next to me is a little, a little chunkier. Um, but let's start with the book that I'm in the middle of, which is The Bloodstones by Tori Tekin. This is the first book in the Legend of the Bruhai series. Um, which is an indie adult fantasy. It is Asian inspired. Um, we follow uh, our main character Giren, who um, like is a little boy. Um, I mean, like he's eleven, so eleven year old boy um, at the start of the book, um, and he is part of like this noble family his um father is a high counselor of the king and he has always been taught to like serve the king to get like a military career type of thing like with a lot of honor and prestige which is very important in this society um and then in the, at the very start um the book opens with him witnessing an execution um and then things go from there and he ends up it's hard to, to give a synopsis without getting too much away um something ends up happening that causes him to have to leave behind his family and the life that he has known so far um i'm really enjoying it it reads so fast um it's quite a bit darker than what i'm personally used to and a lot of what i read um but i am liking it a lot um there's been one scene especially that was so heartbreaking um but yeah it's really good i have a lot of thoughts about the series i just don't know how to art this book I just not sure how to put them into words, so I'm gonna think about that a little bit so that I don't just keep on rambling um incoherently at you. So in the next update I'll talk more about that. I do wanna say that um Tori, the author, is a friend of mine. So take my opinion with um a grain of salt. Uh, and also she did send me the ebook copy of this book um as a review copy, so Full trust heresy there. 
um, but I am genuinely really enjoying this. Like the only way that Tori being my friend impacted me is that I probably would not have picked up this book without her because as I said it is a bit darker than what I typically read. Um, but I am genuinely enjoying it. So I'm now 53% into this one um, and I would like to finish it. It says I have five hours left which is very doable. So um, the bloodstones. The other books that I would like to read um, First, I have The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Look at this copy. Like, it's really fancy hardcover with like spray edges and fancy end papers. This is a library copy. Since when do libraries get editions like this? Anyway, um, so the first book in the in, in a series, I'm not sure what the series is called. Does it say on here? No, doesn't say. But the first book in a series um, came out last year, I believe. Um, it's you no know, pirates in a retired pirate who tells a story like, I think it's gonna be like that same device that something like The Name of the Wind also uses, where it's someone later in life telling um, someone else about their life and then that other person writing it down. That's at least what I've heard from it. Um, we have like a retired pirate who sort of um, gets her um, crew back together for one last mission. I'm so excited about this. I think it's going to be really like fast paced, plot driven, action packed, which Sounds like a, it sounds like a fun adventure, um, and I am really excited for this. Um, this was already on my August year, but I didn't end up getting to it, um, and so now I really, really want to read it <laughs> in September um, because I am genuinely just so excited to get to it. Um, so yeah, that is number one. I my goal for this book is I would like to get at least halfway through it. Um, more would be wonderful, but at least halfway. <laughs> um, so that is number one. Number two is The Wall of Storms, which is immensely chunky. I don't think I'll get very far into it, but I would like to have started it and read like I don't know, like a hundred pages just for like at least properly started it and not just like read five pages on like the evening of like the 30th just to say I've started, you know, like I want to live like properly started and got a little bit into it, um, but I don't expect to get very far into it as it's quite chunky and I don't want to start this before I finish the Bloodstones. Um, because I don't want to read the two of those at the same time, um, because they're both, you know, like adult fantasy, they're both Asian inspired, um, and both reading them in English, you know, like, I don't want to have to deal with the two of them at the same time. I think that would get a little too confusing for my brain. Um, so yeah, it'll take a while before I can get to this, but I am really excited. I loved the grace of kings so so much um and i really want to get back to this world and to this story um but it's been a while because i just have not had the brain space for this uh for most of the year but so i'm hoping that this is the month that it's gonna happen and then finally the last book that i want to start would you believe me if I tell you that I have currently four Sarah G. Mass books checked out from the library? Four. All by the same author. I have Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, which are the third and fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. And then I also have A Court of Mist and Fury. 
and A Court of Wings and Romance, which are the second and third book in the Actor series. And so I thought, you know, I have four now. Maybe I should try, like, start making an event in that. So I want to start A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, book two in the Ekadar series. Um, I have heard that this is a lot of people's favorite book in the series, that like, you know, like book one is, no, no one, like you don't read the book for, you don't read the series for book one. Like this is the book where it gets good, according to like the consensus um, that I've seen. Um, and I'm really, really interested. I know a few things that happen in here because it's very hard to avoid spoilers for Sarah J Maas. Um, so I'm interested to see how that plays out. Um, so yeah, I, if I can finish this book this week, that would be wonderful. It is Sarah J Maas. Uh, her books read pretty quickly. So I think that should be possible, but um, it's also, you know, slightly chunky. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so those are my very ambitious hopes and dreams. Um, then I, as I said, I also have Big Pin, a Tiny Dragon that I want to squeeze in at some point um, because that was on my TBR and then the third album in the Castell series which is also my TBR um, and both of those will well Big Pen of Tiny Dragon will finish the series and then the Castell will get me caught up with that series um, so that's always great um, but yeah those are the plans for the week um, let me see how, what time it is. I'm going to start getting ready for my walk. Um, and I will talk to you when I have another update. Bye. Hi. It is Sunday evening now. Um, I had planned to update earlier today. Um, but I didn't do that. And I also didn't read. Um... So here's the next update. I'll first talk about the walk I told you about. Um, I injured my knee during the walk um, to the point that it like literally couldn't support my weight anymore for a little bit. Um, so we had to call a friend to pick me up and drive me back home. <laughs> Um, the friends I was walking with, they waited with me until the friend was there, and then they finished their walk. Um, I was really bummed, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, still hurts, but it's already feeling a lot better than yesterday. Um, like, I can do more movements now um, with it without being in immense pain. Um, stairs still hurt, um, but other than that I'm mostly fine at this point. Um, so I think that by Tuesday I think the pain will be gone. I don't, I think like tomorrow I'm still gonna feel it a little bit, um, but I'm hoping that then it'll be fine. I'm trying to give my knee a lot of rest, um, so that it can heal because I think it's just um I forgot the word in English but like I use it too much because before the walk I already spent a month and a half no a week and a half not a month and a half a week and a half in Greece um which if you know Greece it has a lot of mountains so like just walking around there as well um already asked a lot of my knee and then the walk um we did a lot of hills um and some very steep climbs and and one of those climbs is um where i just couldn't continue anymore 
Um, so I think it's just like, it was the hill too many. Um, so I'm just giving it rest and I think we'll be fine. But yeah, um, today I just did some bits and pieces around the house. I, there was so much that I wanted to do. I wanted to do read, I wanted to film a few videos, I wanted to run some errands, which like, I already knew like last uh, night that like those would not happen at this point um, because, you know, I want to rest my knee. Um, but I just didn't do a lot today. Um, haven't read so far since the opening clip. Um, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start Amina. Um, and read that until I go to bed because it's a quarter to nine right now. So... I'm going to let it get a chunk into this today. I hope I'm really excited for this. Um, so yeah. That's it going to be. Um, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. So, it's now Wednesday. Usually the video would have been up earlier today, but I barely read anything. So like... Then this video would have mostly about my knee, which, by the way, is fully healed now, so yay. But that would hardly be a reading vlog, so I'm just going to extend it a little bit. Um, I did start Amina um, two days ago now. Yes, I think it was on Monday. Um, I read the first two chapters so far, and I'm quite enjoying it. Um... The narrative um, structure is, as I said, like Amina later in life telling her story to the storyteller, but we just only get Amina's, what Amina's saying to them. So if I just compare it to The Name of the Wind, which is just what I thought about, uh, or what I think about, the first book that comes to mind with a structure like that, I really like there that we sort of get some scenes before we meet Kavoth with just the chronicler, and that we get some scenes in the present that maybe don't need to be super exciting or like have a lot of plot but just really establishing that this is told later in life um and that it is told in that way i really liked it the way in which it is sort of established that it is amina telling the story is that she sometimes get interrupted by the person writing down the story um and so we get those so I, I don't mind that i like um that we get something to establish that is told because i think that can be important in um so i when there is sort of a layer between audience and the character so we're not getting their thoughts in the moment but there is some sort of representing themselves whether that is through a narrative device like this or if it's like a mixed media thing or if it's like letters or journal entries something like that there is always a bit of a um you know yeah you're always on lookout to or at least i am for a bit of an unreliable narrator because there is some level of presenting yourself in a certain way um which you usually don't have in your inner thoughts um so i like that it is made really clear that it is her telling the story um which doesn't mean that she's lying but it i mean the unreliable narrator thing doesn't necessarily mean that you're lying but it's like you're 
might be framing um, the facts in a certain way and giving your version of the facts or a, a curated version of the facts, which isn't necessarily what is happening, but there is always the potential for that. I hope I'm making sense. Um, so I like that we're reminded of that, but the one thing I find a little bit jarring is we don't get the interruption itself. We only get Amina's reaction to the interruption, and I wish that we would get the interruption too. I mean, I think that the way it is done in this book is definitely something that I can get used to as the book progresses. Um, but right now, you know, I'm, that is something I'm struggling with a little bit. But as I said, I'm only two chapters in. I think that's 50 pages. It's not very far. That's why I don't have a bunch of other thoughts because it's pretty early on. Um, so I'm actually going to read some more of it right now so that hopefully I'll have more to update on in the next book. Hi, it is now Friday evening. I don't have a reading update because, again, I haven't been doing a lot of reading. I'm still trying to find my routine um, with the new semester starting. Um, also, I still have to pick. There's like one subject that I still have to that I think I've, I've now decided what I want to do for it, but I have been thinking about that a lot. And then I have to pick a topic for uh, my bachelor's thesis, which is also a bit of a thing that is on my mind. So that would also take away a bit of brain space um, from reading. Um, so I hope that once those things are settled a little bit more, that reading will take some more priority again. Um, but I do have a bit of a haul today because I went to the library. Um, because yesterday I filmed my October TBR game and I wanted to get some of the books that are on my October TBR. Um, and as usual, I took a few more than I intended to, um, because that's how those things go. Um, but you know, it's library books. It doesn't cost money and I can always return them and read if I don't manage to get to them in time. Um, but also, first news, I ordered a new phone case. This what this is it. I really love it. I think it's so pretty. But I fill my phone. And my old phone case was really convenient because it could stand up on its own. While this one it can, so that's why I put my phone in the old case, so to film this. And I'm really bummed because I absolutely love the way it looks, but it's just not very convenient. And with me filming on my phone, with doing the vlogs, the amount of times that I'm updating, that I would always have to switch my phone back to my old case to do it because I tried to, I, I, I tried to make a setup that worked with the new one and it just kept falling over and it kept, you know, just really annoying and so with a lot of pain in my heart I do think I'm gonna return this which is so sad because it's so freaking stunning but yeah I'm just yeah, yeah it's sad um like it's not like I can't use my old phone case anymore like there are some little bits and pieces that like starting to like you can tell that it's getting a little bit old um so that's why i wanted a new one but it's not like it's super urgent it's not like it's like falling apart or anything so i can still use it um but i really want one because i was 
also I'm like I really like the flowers and the design on this like look at it the ones I don't have doesn't really have like a design it's just like a plain pink one so yeah I'm so sad but I think I'm gonna gonna have to return it because just convenience before it looks I guess why can't I never make pretty things that also have all the features that you want? That's a struggle. But anyway, the books that I got, um, there is one that is still on my September TBR that I might um, still squeeze in because it's a comic and that is La Fortress de Rachel, the third volume in the Gaston series which is the last one that is out currently there is a fourth book or fourth one on its way um but that one isn't out yet um but so this was on my September TBR so I might still like try to squeeze it into September um it wouldn't take me too long because it's a comic um and I've um I'm casually enjoying the series I like the plot and stuff but I don't have a bunch of thoughts about it. it's just like a thing that i enjoy in the moment um but yeah nothing much more than that but you know what that is okay as well um so yeah excited about this um then i also had another comic um which is set in the same world as a comic series that I've been loving this year. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I absolutely loved um, Castle in the Stars and um, the um, their seven, the seventh volume. We're waiting on their six one out, but with, with the way that the six one ends. You know, there's going to be a need a um, third one or a seventh one. I'm a little distracted because I'm trying to find what the original title of this is, but I can't find it because it's originally in front, and I'm pretty sure it's the spinoff one. isn't translated to English so I try to go with the French one I'll I'm not sure I'll put it in the it'll be down in the description um but it says it's the first one in a spinoff uh, that is set on Venus and with how the sixth sixth volume of um Castle and Star ends the say that they're going to Venus for reasons that I won't spoil um and this one is set a few years before the sixth volume so I just think that um according to like the back of this book uh of this copy there's gonna be three parts in this uh spin-off little thing so I think that we're gonna have those three and then in the seventh volume um we're gonna have our characters in Castle and the Stars are gonna arrive at Venus and we're gonna get the characters from this series as well. So I think that that is why it's done the way it's done. These are different authors though, which sometimes happens in comics. Um, so I'm not too, too worried about that. Um, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about this. So there are two comics um then initially um my october tbr was going up after this video so that would be a spoiler but with me extending this vlog because i've barely done reading um like i think i'm gonna extend it to monday because then that is the last day of september so it kind of like has to like end the last day of the month and then the first day of the month is gonna be the new vlog um, so, if you have seen this video, 
which is up by now, you know that, oh, uh, which one I do first? There's two books on there. Um, let's do nonfiction first. The, I always have like the random number generator at the end of the game. Um, and that one picked and man created God. What is the subtitle in English? Co King's Copes and Conquests at the Time of Jesus by Selena O'Grady, which is about sort of the rise and fall of thick religions and especially Christianity. And, you know, in a world where um, a lot of like political rulers sort of try to solidify their power through religion and where every single place has their own um, religion. What was it about this like little like group of people somewhere in the Middle East that founded Christianity that then suddenly that became um, such a big religion? Um, so this book like sort of tries to investigate that. Um, and I think it, it can be really interesting. It's a bit of a history book, like history of religion. Um, it sounds great. And then while I was in the history section, especially this is the, this was the Roman history section, I saw another book that I'm interested in. Um, again, I need to look what the English title then is. Is that it? Is this called Lives of the Romans in um, English? Which is really funny because it has a ridiculously long title in Dutch. Um, by Philip Matitsak and Joanne Berry. Um, so it's just looking at the life of more of like the ordinary Roman because we often hear about um, you know, political figures and the, the, like the politics is a thing that when you learn history it's often like the, the wars and the battles and the politics and oh but like the life of your average person um you know is often like a little neglected i would say um which is something that i'm personally very interested in i care less about like the big battles and stuff but i do want to know like what was life like for your average ordinary Roman in this case, um, which is a lot harder to piece together, um, but you can do it. And so this book talks about that, um, more like the Romans specifically. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to read this. Um, but I picked this up on an absolute whim um, so yeah, I don't know. I now have two nonfiction books at the start of the new semester, which is perfect timing to be borrowing nonfiction from the library, of course, because, I mean, there's not enough information flung at you left and right. When you're at university, no, 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 you need to, to supplement in your spare time. So I don't know if both of those get read. I'm going to try to read um, the religion one because, you know, that one's on my TBR. Um, but we'll see how it goes. And um, then one I didn't mention it on my TBR game, but I had as a buddy we planned is Pompeii by Robert Harris, um, which is a historical fiction set in, you guessed it, Pompeii. Um, you know, I really liked um, the Hero Trilogy by him, which starts with Imperium. Um, so yeah, I hope that this one's going to be just as wonderful as that one. Um, and then the last book I picked up 
um, is just a little novella. Um, it's really quick, really easy from a series that I've been really enjoying, and that is Mammoth at the Gate by Amy Bo, which is the fourth book in the Singing Hills cycle. The first book was um, The Empress of Sultan's Fortune. And I've really loved that one. I also really, really enjoyed the second book, um, but for different reasons. I was a little disappointed in the third one, but I hope that the fourth one um, will be excellent again. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this. So those are the books that I got yesterday. No, not yesterday, earlier today at the library. So yeah. It's actually, I started this clip thinking it was pretty bad because it's like six of them, but then two are actually on my TBR, so I was planning on reading them anyway. And then two of them are comics, and then one of them is a novella, so it's like only really this one. That is a bit bigger to, to add. Also just like the, there's like colored illustrations in it. And just like the way like the the, the the pages are, you know, like the layout of the pages and the material and like the very glossy cover and a sort of awkward size make it feel a lot like a magazine, which is kind of funny. So I don't know, that's what I thought when I saw it. Um, so yeah. You know, I have a lot of exciting things, um, but for now I'm going to focus on Amina El Sarafi because I want to be able to finish that before I need to return it. Um, and then I also have the Bloodstones, which I've also started, so I also want to continue that one. Um, but it's not from the library, so it it's not as time sensitive as Amina El Sarafi is, um, but tomorrow I'm gonna have a pretty long like train slash bus ride, so I am then going to read a Bloodstones because it's a new book, it's just a lot easier to do on a train or a bus than a physical book. Um, so, so more of that will be read then. Um, yeah, as I already said, I plan to continue on this video up until Monday. Um, I hope to have like some proper reading updates for then because this video has not been very reading heavy, which I don't mind that I don't read a ton. I'm just annoyed at myself is that like, I wanna, I wanna film a clip, but I have nothing to say in it. That's like the thing that I'm mostly annoyed by because I really feel like filming the vlog and chatting with people, but I have nothing to chat about. So that's sad. Um, so yeah, let's hope that I um, have more interesting things to talk about next time. Fine. So, it's Friday, um, and I'm a quarter into Amina Al Sarafi, so I feel comfortable giving some thoughts now. Um, so, I let's start off. I thought that this was going to be a fantasy set in a different world um that was just middle east transpired i didn't think it was be set in our world which isn't necessarily a positive or a negative either way it's just a thing that i mentioned um that is different from my expectations but doesn't really affect it i do i like fun world building um, so 
you know, for that reason I often like, like, a new world, but I am not very familiar with the historical setting of this, um, so, you know, like, I do get to sort of experience, um, a world and a culture and stuff that I don't know or that I'm not very familiar with. Um, so I like that. Um, I also like Amina as a character. She, she, uh, won't take people's crap. Um, she, she has some sass. She, you know, She has power to her, which I respect. Um, like she's a bit of an older protagonist than what we often get in fantasy. Um, I'm gonna put this down because it's starting to get heavy. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really like that. Um, I already mentioned that I wish we had whatever the person writing the story down interrupts her, that I wish we got more of the interruption itself and not only her reactions. While it is still true, um, I've gotten a little bit more used to it now and I don't mind it as much as I did. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying the plot and just her yeah, she has a lot of experience and she just, there are things that other people are like, are you crazy? And she's like, I've just been doing this for a long time and I know that this will work out. Uh, I know that this is how people will react to XYZ, um, which I find very fun. Um, yeah, I, I think that this is going to be a very, very fun read overall um it's not yet a new favorite uh, at this point but we're still early on it can still happen um but also didn't go into this expecting a five star this was more like a four star prediction so something that i think i will have a very good time with um and that's still the feeling that i have now so yeah i'm i'm happy i expect to get a lot of this read over the course of the weekend, I don't know if I'm going to be able to update during the weekend, so it'll depend. Um, but we'll see. Um, you'll see that in a minute, um, but for now, that is my update about I mean, El Serapi. So I'll see you either this weekend or on Monday. Bye. Hi. It is Sunday evening and I am about two thirds of the way through the adventures of Amina El Serafi. Um, I'm enjoying this, but I don't think I'm enjoying it as much as I maybe could. Um, <clears throat> This book is pretty different from what I expected it to be. Um, I thought that we would get like an adventure at sea and we would, um, you know, go on this journey to find um, this person that she needs to find. Um, <clears throat> and it's been a little bit different from that. Uh, first of all, she spends quite a big part of this book getting her crew back together, um, which I did not expect. I thought that that would go fairly quickly and it would set off. And also, this barely spends any time at sea. I thought that that would be the majority of the book. Um, it's mostly like, we get a few sentences of them sailing to this island and then we are on this island over to the city and we are in the city. 
Um, and so most of what happens is on land. Um, there's a lot of talking and just trying to figure out um, sort of like this mystery of, of where they need to go. And it's quite a bit of the book as well that they don't really know um, where to search for this person and they have to figure that out. Um, and so it is not quite as page turnery and not quite as action packed as what I expected from it and what I wanted from it. And so that is sort of affecting my enjoyment because I think that without those expectations, I would really, really like this. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's not as plot driven and not as action packed as I thought it would be. Um, I'm, one thing I'm also slightly struggle with is sometimes we have these, I'll show you. They just look like this, like, you know, with the, at the corners we have that and it's like a short thing that is not really told by Amina but is the person writing it down um, interfering and just adding something but I'm not sure I like that um, I mean um, there are instances where it's just like general myth and I don't mind it there because it would be like legends and mythology and um, stuff like that that the person writing it would know and so maybe Amina would have told him the story like assuming that you know those stories but the person writing it down was like maybe we should um, pop in and just really quickly tell you what the legend is um so i don't mind that but there are also just these like excerpts from certain things and i am not loving that because it is so single pov if this would have been a multi pov story like i wouldn't mind those but because it is so amina telling this person everything and that is what it's written down i find that a little bit jarring and that kind of pulls me out of the story a little bit i hope i'm making sense um so yeah i, I sound very negative about this book um which i'm not i'm i'm still really enjoying it um but i just need to sort of change my perspective of what I thought that this book would be in order to appreciate what it is. So yeah, I'm gonna read some more of it now. Um, if I can read a hundred more pages tonight, that would be lovely because that way I can finish it tomorrow which is good for two reasons one then i can end this vlog with the book finished and two it is due at the library tomorrow so i kind of need to finish it i could probably be bad and like stretch it till tuesday if i have to but i would prefer to just be able to return it tomorrow even if it's just tomorrow evening um so yeah i'm gonna read some more of it now and then to try to do that so that I can finish this book up tomorrow, finish this vlog up tomorrow and then I can start a new vlog on Tuesday for a new month. I'm so excited about my October TBR, my October reading is going to be so good. Um, so yeah, I'll um, talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Hi. It is Sunday evening and I have finished The Adventures of Amina El-Sarafi. Um, 
I ended up quite enjoying this in the end. Um, it the, the story became quite compelling and I got really invested and read the ending relatively quickly. Um, I felt like the stakes got amped up and the action got amped up and you know it ended up being a pretty intense um, last hundred pages. Um, so yeah, I um, enjoy some of the found family that we have in here. Um, we have also, it's a series and we have a pretty good conclusion in this one, um, but there is definitely still possibility to continue the story and I really liked the way that um, that is done like the way that um you know we find the material to continue like I think this will probably be a five book series in total um so yeah I quite enjoyed those things um, I enjoyed Amina as a main character, um, she was fun to read from, um, I liked some of the, like, the, the lore and the magic and, and the, um, you know, the folklore and, 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 and some mythology that is weaved into the magic of this story, um, so yeah, I really ended up enjoying that. I already mentioned before that my experience with it is like slightly tainted by my expectations and that if I would have gone in with different expectations I probably would have had a better time with this um but I still did enjoy it I'm thinking like maybe a four star or maybe three and a half three and a half to four something like that um there are some conversations that we had that felt a tad bit forced like to put in a certain theme and I um it was like we are now talking about this theme rather than like sort of weaving it slightly more naturally into the story um I had that like one or two times um but yeah overall i think if you go in with the correct expectations i think um that you could enjoy it um i just thought that it would be more like pulpy action-packed adventure story than what it was like it was still fun and 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 still an adventure um but just not in a way I thought it would be. Um, I don't know what else to say about this book. Um, so yeah, I will continue on in the series when the second book comes out. Um, and I would like to read more from this author. I know she also has the Big Bad trilogy out. Um, so I would give that a try two um but it's not like one that i'm rushing to read like this second um, that's where my thoughts are about this book um so yeah that is the vlog i'm gonna end it here um well yeah i read the adventure of aminas rafi in this vlog um as you've heard i've read a ton more so in next vlog I will definitely continue in the bloodstones and start on my October TBR and I'm very excited for that um, but so yeah this is the end of this week's vlog um, the first vlog in a while I've, I'm sorry if I've been a bit rambly or a bit rusty um, next vlog will be better i hope in that regard um but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless 
Um, let me know if you've read The Adventures of Amina El Swarki or just what you've read um, in the past week. And I hope to see you again in another video. Bye!